Hi everyone, it's uh, really exciting to be here and to be able to give my first uh, conference talk to you all. Um, so uh, first I'll give you some motivation of why we care about this. Um, and so flow, <clears throat> several flow conditions have been introduced previously um, and they've been used to, uh, they're all sufficient conditions for determinism in measurement based quantum comp computation. And um, importantly, they've been proven to be able that uh, ZX diagrams with these flow conditions can be efficiently extracted to circuits. Um, while this problem is known to be sharply hard in general, and I think John or Neil is giving a talk on this later on, uh, so it's a nice little segue. So here's an outline of the talk. We're going to be going through an overview of the ZX calculus, measurement-based quantum computation, and flow conditions. Then we're going to look at rewrite rules which preserve the existence of Pauli flow, then um, introduce uh, two new normal forms, one of which is unique, and then finally we're going to be talking about uh, the completeness of these flow-preserving rules. So first, an overview of the ZX calculus. Um, you can't see everything here. Um, I don't know why. Um, sorry. This was fixed beforehand, but um, is, is this, yeah, uh, I'm going to have to ch change this, sorry. Um, OK, everything seems fine now. OK, uh, sorry about that. Okay, so ZX diagrams are generated by um, two sets of spiders called the green and red spiders. Um, the green spiders correspond to the Z basis and the red spiders correspond to the X basis. So the generators are given here. And um, we can write the Hadamard gate in terms of red and green spiders, but we choose to give it its own generator, this yellow box, because it's uh, so commonly used. And we'll often, if there's a Hadamard on an edge connecting two green spiders, we'll represent this by a dashed line like at the bottom. Um, so now that we've given the generators, we can uh, immediately write down some commonly used states uh, and unitaries. So if we have a spider with one output, then it's a state. And um, if we have a green state with no, no phase, then it's the plus. If the green spider has a pi phase, then it gives us the minus. And then similarly, the red spider with one output gives us the zero. And if it has a pi phase, it gives us the uh, one state. And then if we have... Um, Two arity spiders, uh, the two arity green spider just corresponds to a uh, Z rotation with a phase alpha, and uh, the same with the red spider for the X rotation. And what makes the ZX calculus so powerful is the set of rewrite rules that comes along with it. Um, so here we've given a set of, uh, a complete set of rewrite rules for the stabilizer ZX calculus, which was given by um, Miriam Beckins in the uh, original paper. Um, and the rules, uh, these are all very commonly used. So we have that we can fuse two spiders of the same colors and add their phases. Uh, if we have an Hadamard gate on each leg of a sp uh, spider, it changes the color. Um, if we have a uh, one arity spider, uh, sorry, two arity spider with no phase, then it's the identity. Um, two Hadamard gates cancel each other out. And then these rules at the bottom, um, which are known as Pi copy and the bioalgebra rules. Um, so if you've seen the ZX calculus before, you're probably quite familiar with these. Um, but we won't be heavily using these rules in particular today, uh, just given for them for clarity. Um, so we're going to be talking about measurement-based quantum computing. So uh, we're going to introduce measurements. So uh, while we can give do measurements in arbitrary planes, we choose to restrict to the XY, XZ, and YZ planes uh, for simplicity. And uh, because we're talking about Pauli only uh, diagrams later on, uh, we also have Pauli measurements. So these are the ones in the bottom table. Um, and so these will be the most uh, important for later on in the, in the talk. So uh, X measurement is just a green spider with no phase. Y measurement is a pi by two phase green spider. And a Z measurement is a, a, red, a red spider with no phase. Um, the undesired outcomes of these, uh, so these are the desired outcomes. If we were to measure the undesired outcome, we just add a pi phase onto each of these. Um, okay, so in, in measurement-based quantum computation, we begin by preparing a uh, resource state, which could be universal. Um, for example, the cluster states. And uh, the resource state only depends on the size of the computation, which we want to perform uh, in some way. Um, and then we actually perform all of the computation just by measuring uh, the qubits with single qubit measurements. 
Um, and this is particularly useful for distributed com quantum computing. So we can get a server to make the state for us, send it over to us, and then all we have to be able to do is do measurements, which are obviously significantly easier. So in the ZX calculus, we're going to be representing measurement-based quantum computations using uh, graph states and MBQC form diagrams. So a graph state is just a diagram where every spider has an output, uh, every spider is green, and there are uh, every edge connecting spiders is a Hadamard edge. Um, and then a GSLC form diagram is a graph state up to some local Cliffords on its outputs. So there's an example. And then a measurement-based quantum computing, well, MBQC form diagram is a graph state where instead of all of the qubits having outputs, we allow some of the qubits to have a measurement uh, effect instead of their output. Um, and we also allow qubits to have inputs. So this is an example of, of one of these. Um, and then again, an MBQC plus LC form diagram is just an MBQC form diagram up to local Cliffords on the outputs and input wires. So hopefully that's all clear. Um, so measurement-based quantum com computations are inher inherently probabilistic because when we, every measurement we do can either give us the outcome we want or uh, the wrong outcome. And so we need to be able to correct for the undesired outcomes on future measurements. Um, and one, uh, several flow conditions have been introduced to deal with this. And they kind of give us a recipe on how to um, do all of these corrections. And whenever we have an undesired outcome, uh, these flow conditions kind of tell us how we can correct for that. Um, so yeah, these flow conditions are uh, sufficient and sometimes necessary for uh, indeterminism in MBQC. And it's Im importantly, all of them have uh, been proven to have efficient circuit extraction algorithms. Uh, yeah, this fell, sorry, I'll put it over here. I'm not using this. Cool. <clears throat> oh, the, yeah, sorry. Thank you, cool. <clears throat> Okay, so um, corrections in measurement-based quantum computing rely on this fixed point property. Um, and so what this fixed point property says is that if for given any subset D of the vertices of a graph state, uh, we can apply a Pali X gate to D and a Pali Z gate to all of the odd neighborhood of D, where the odd neighborhoods are the set of vertices which have an odd number of neighbors in D. Uh, and this will leave the state invariant. So in this example diagram, uh, the top qubit isn't in D, and it has, no, it has an even number of neighbors in D, so we put nothing on this. Uh, the second from the top qubit has an odd number of neighbors in D, it's only connected to this qubit here, and so we put a, a, a Pali Z on it, which is a green uh, pi phase. And then uh, this third qubit is in D, so we put a red pi phase on it, and it's also in the odd neighborhood of D because it uh, is connected to these three other vertices in D. Uh, and so this is why this has both a Pali X and a Pali Z applied to it. Um, I'm not going to go through the rest of the qubits, but um, hopefully you can tell from that uh, how this works. And so we can use this uh, fixed point property for correcting uh, error measurements. So whenever uh, we get an undesired outcome, uh, say we're measuring this qubit U, uh, uh, the, this is a YZ plane measurement, I think, the red one. and um, if we're measuring it and we want to get a, uh, the measurement angle alpha, but if we get an, the undesired outcome, then it means we've measured alpha plus pi. And so we want to be able to correct for this and kind of reset this uh, angle to be alpha. Um, and so what we do here is uh, we've picked um, D is U, D1, and D2. And then if we apply the fixed point operation, we get this thing at the bottom, so we get, put a red pi phases on all of the, fa the qubits in D. We put green pi phases on all of the odd neighbors. Um, and then uh, after some simple rewriting, we see we've corrected U's measurement angle to alpha, and uh, we've just changed some of the other qubits at measurement angles. Now, what's special about Pauli flow, um, which is what we're going to be talking about, is that um, with all of the other flow conditions that have previously been introduced, all of the uh, vertices which we're correcting on need to be in the future of U. But uh, here, if we consider left of U to be the past and right of U to be the future, um, with Pauli flow, we can actually uh, use qubits in the past for corrections as long as they're Pauli measurements. So, for example, this D1 here, um, this is in the past of U. 
but because, we, because it, um, it's a Pauli X measurement, we see that putting the red pi phase on, on it d uh, does nothing, and so we're able to correct on it still, even though it's in the past. So now we're going to talk about uh, rewrite rules preserving the existence of Pauli flow. So this is something that's been looked at quite a lot before. Um, they've been used in the context of G flow by uh, Duncan et al. in uh, their paper on graph theoretic simplification of quantum circuits using the ZX calculus. Uh, and then by back in Zetal in there and back again, a circuit extraction tail. And then finally, in QPL last year, Will Simmons uh, generalized all of these proofs to be about Pauli flow. Um, so the simplest rule is Z deletion. So given some Z measured qubit, we can just delete it without affecting the interpretation of the diagram. Uh, and this preserves the existence of Pauli flow. So uh, this is the fact that this is sound is quite trivial in the ZX calculus from the rules. Um, but this is quite useful uh, and will be going forward. Slightly more complicated than Z deletion is local complementation. So uh, the local complementation of a graph about a vertex U, uh, we ha this gives the same graph, uh, it's the same vertices of the graph, but it changes the edges by toggling the connectivity of the neighbors of U. So if v two neighbors V and W are connected two neighbors of U, V and W, are connected in G, then they're connected in the local complementation of G about U, um, then, sorry, I've said that wrong. They're not connected in the, uh, in the local complementation, and if they aren't connected in the original graph, then they will be connected in the local complementation. Uh, so you can see more clearly with the ZX diagram here, if we local complement about U, um, then what in the ZX calculus, this corresponds to putting a red, red minus pi over two phase on the output corresponding to U and a green pi by two phase on all of U's neighbors. And this does a local complementation. Um, so you see these two qubits are connected in the original graph and now they're not here. Um, and then the second and third qubit aren't corrected in the original, connected in the original graph, uh, but they are in the local complementation. So is that clear? I hope that's clear for everyone. If you have any questions, please let me know. And, and like I said, uh, this was proven by Will Simmons last year that, uh, to prove the existence of Pauli flow. Um, we also have pivoting, um, which I'm not going to go into in too much detail, um, as it's just a series of three local complementations. But um, importantly, this is uh, symmetric in, in, the, uh, in, in the qubits. So if we do uh, a pivot about U and UV is the same as doing a pivot about VU. Um, and this also preserves the existence of Pauli flow as it's just three local complementations. So pivoting is self inverse and uh, doing four local complementations gives us the identity. So three local complementations is inverse to a single local complementation. Um, but there's, it was never proven previously that the inverse to the Z deletion rule preserves Pauli flow. Um, and so that's one of the first things we proved in the paper, uh, that we, given some uh, subset of the vertices D, uh, we can arbitrarily add Z measured vertices connected to these, this subset of the vertices, and this will not change the interpretation of the diagram. Um, cool. So now that we've gone through the Pali flow preserving rules, uh, which those three or four are the only ones we need, uh, we can now talk about uh, polynom phase polynomial form diagrams and our unique stabilizer normal form. Uh, so first, I'm um, going to briefly go through RGSLC form diagrams. So these were introduced by uh, Backens uh, uh, based on the stabilizer graphs of Elliott, Easton, and Caves. And it's just a, a graph state local Clifford form diagram where we restrict the local Clifford operators allowed on the outputs. Um, so we can only have k pi over 2 or plus or minus pi over 2 with some red phase, uh, like in this diagram. And importantly, uh, no two qubits with red phases in their vertex operator are allowed to be connected. So uh, as you can see in this diagram, uh, the third qubit from the top and the fourth qubit uh, cannot be connected. <clears throat> um, and in, uh, every graph state local Clifford form diagram is equivalent to some RGSLC form diagram, just using a sequence of local complementations, which we'll use later. So 
it, it was important for us to, uh, instead of having things in terms of green spiders and red spiders, it was a lot more useful for us to, uh, for the, what we're going to do later to have uh, gre green spiders and Hadamards only. And so we can use local com complementations to kind of convert between having red spiders and green spiders or having green spiders and Hadamards, as shown with these, uh, these diagrams here. And so we've defined a, a new, uh, a new normal form called phase polynomial form, uh, which is essentially the same as RGSLC form, except um, we have just ha kind of just have Hadamards and green spiders. Um, but so we've defined it as, um, okay, every, uh, the top point is not quite so needed. So we can have red spiders and green spiders. Red spiders have a phase of zero or pi. Green spiders can have any integer multiple of pi over two as a phase. Uh, red speed spiders and green spiders can be, um, be, can be connected and green spiders can be connected to other green spiders by Hadamard edges. So mo most importantly, red spiders can only be connected to green spiders here. And we'll see how this has anything to do with uh, uh, only having Hadamards and green spiders soon. Um, using a color change rule, it qu uh, quickly becomes the same thing. So here you can see it. Uh, so this is the RGSLC form diagram I showed before. After doing local complementations about the third and the fourth qubit, we obtain this thing. And here now we only have green, green spiders and Hadamard gates. And once we do fusion and uh, color change rules, we get our phase polynomial form diagrams. Um, so this is the phase polynomial form diagram corresponding to the RGSLC form diagram previously mentioned. And so we've called this phase polynomial form, but uh, it's not immediately obvious why this is called this. Um, and so uh, it's been long known that uh, n qubit stabilizer state can be written in this form, where uh, so we have some sum over uh, the elements of an affine space, uh, and then we have i to the power of some linear function, minus one to the power of some quadratic function, and then this is a sum all over all of the uh, elements of this affine space. And we're going to go through an example to show why these things are related. Um, so this is the phase polynomial form diagram given previously. And uh, this is the state that it corresponds to. Um, I'm not going to sh show that this is it, but uh, hopefully you can believe me. Um, and so we'll quickly kind of go through all of the different parts. Uh, sorry, the green color is quite hard to see here. but. Um, the, the green spiders in this diagram correspond to the free var variables of the affine space, um, which is the bits highlighted in green. Uh, the red spiders correspond to the dependent variables of the affine space. And the equations which define said affine space are determined by the connectivity and the phases of the red spiders. So here we see this third spider has a pi phase and it's only connected to qubit one. And so this corresponds to this one plus x1. And this bottom spider has no phase and is connected to uh, spiders one and two. And so this is where we get this uh, x1 plus x2. Um, thirdly, the function in the exponent of i is determined by the phases of the green spiders. So uh, spider x1 has a one pi over two phase, which gives us this i to the x1. If it had a pi phase, then it would give us an i to the 2x1, which would then, you could write it as minus 1 to the x1, x2 plus x1 if you wanted. Um, and then the, sec the second green spider has no phase, and so it doesn't contribute anything. And finally, the uh, function in, in the power of x of minus 1 is just given by the Hadamard gates, uh, the Hadamard edges. So here we have a Hadamard edge connecting spider 1 and spider 2. And so we get a minus one to the x1, x2. And so in our paper, I'm not, I'm not going to go through this in detail, but in our paper, we've came up with a procedure for obtaining a state from a phase polynomial form diagram and obtaining a phase polynomial form diagram from a state and a set of free variables. So it's the, importantly, um, there are many po phase polynomial form diagrams corresponding to the same state. But once we fix a set of free variables for said uh, state, that, uh, or for the affine subspace which determines the state, then uh, we've kind of fixed the phase polynomial form diagram we get. 
And so uh, we're able to get a unique normal form from this. Um, so all that we need to do is be able to find a unique way of uh, fixing a set of free variables. Um, and so the way we've chosen, uh, the way we've chosen to do this is by ordering the qubits from top to bottom. Uh, any order would work, but uh, and any order would give a different normal form. Um, but we've cho cho we choose top to bottom just for convenience, um, and we define we say something's in canonical form if uh, r the red spiders are only connected to green spiders which appear earlier in the order. Um, and so we'll give some examples of this in a second. I should have given one here. Um, cool. So now that we've defined our new uh, unique normal form, we're going to quickly go through uh, our, our completeness procedure, which involves rewriting all of our diagrams to this new normal form, and then all of the rewrite rules used to rewrite to this normal form. Uh, we've proven that their inverses uh, exist and preserve the existence of Pauli flow. And so we're able to uh, do all of this rewriting while preserving Pauli flow. So here we've given two MBQC plus LC form diagrams. Um, we've done this for kind of generality. We can apply, we're going to delete all of the internal vertices here. And then um, once all of the internal vertices are gone, these things will be um, up to map state to duality. They will be RGSLC form diagrams or GSLC form diagrams. And so we can uh, apply the same uh, procedure. Uh, we can think about it in the same way. So our first step uh, in our procedure for rewriting diagrams uh, into this normal form is to perform Z deletion. So we delete the Z measured qubits, which are uh, the one at the bottom in the left diagram and the one on the right in the, uh, the right diagram. And then once we've deleted all of the Z measured qubits, all of our remaining measurements are either X or Y measurements. And so we can apply uh, the procedure uh, from uh, the Duncan et al paper on graph theoretic simplification, uh, where we can use local complementations and Z deletions um, until the diagram has no internal spiders. So for the left diagram on the previous page, uh, what we do is we local complement about the leftmost and rightmost vertices to get the middle diagram. And then we can just delete the Z measured qubits to obtain the right hand diagram. <clears throat> so we now do this for the other diagram we had. Um, and we, again, we local complement about the top qubit here uh, to obtain the second diagram. Local complement about the bottom qubit to obtain the third diagram and then perform Z deletion again to obtain the last. <clears throat> now, once all of our qubits have, once all of our diagrams have no internal vertices uh, as here, um, we can consider them to be local, uh, GSLC form diagrams up to map state duality. Um, and then we can use the procedure given in back in this paper uh, for rewriting any GSLC form diagram into our GSLC form. So here we've, uh, so here we have that um, this top left qubit. This thing is not um, this thing we don't want for our GSLC form. So we're going to do a local complementation here, uh, which gives us the second diagram. Uh, now the second diagram, uh, these two op uh, operators on the outputs are both allowed in the RGSLC form. So we can consider this to be an RGSLC form diagram. And then we just apply the procedure for rewriting into phase polynomial form that we showed before. So we're going to do local complementations on the two output qubits, which gives us this diagram. And then finally, we just do spider fusions and color changes to obtain this. <clears throat> um, now, the other diagram we had was actually already in uh, phase polynomial form. So uh, from two so slides ago, uh, you see if in this bottom diagram, if we fuse the pi phase into the green spider and then you uh, use the color change rule to change the t uh, top right and the bottom left spiders into red spiders, uh, we get that this is a phase polynomial form diagram. And um, moreover, we just need to rewrite the two diagrams we have into canonical form to kind of finish our proof of, uh, of completeness. So 
Um, we see here, this diagram on the right is already in canonical form um, because uh, we consider the top left qubit to be qubit one, this to be qubit two, this is qubit three, and this is qubit four, and we have that only red spiders are only connected to spiders earlier in the order, which is how we defined our canonical form. And so now we just need to rewrite the other diagram we had into canonical form, which we do by pivoting along this bottom edge, or we can think about it as local complementing on this qubit, then on this qubit, and then on this qubit again. Um, and so now we find a way to rewrite both of the diagrams into this same form, um, our, which is our unique normal form. And all that remains is to uh, undo all of the rules used to get us here. So um, we've proven that uh, we've only used local complementation, pivoting, and Z deletion to rewrite into our canonical form. And we've proven that all of the inverse of, this, of these uh, exist and preserve Pauli flow. And so we can just, if we rewrite the two diagrams into unique normal form, we can undo all of the rules used to get one of the diagrams into this form to find a sequence of rewrite rules, rewriting the first diagram into the second. Um, how are we doing on time? Um, I've actually got through that way quicker than I expected. I don't know if I spoke too fast. Um, so, yeah, um, so this is, this is a, the, what we've uh, obtained. So we can rewrite a, any two diagrams which are uh, equivalent um, and both have Pauli flow into one another, and each of these rules will preserve the existence of Pauli flow. And so this is a kind of stepping stone. Um, we've only done this for Pauli-only diagrams, which could also be thought of as stabilizer diagrams, um, which um, isn't ideal. Uh, eventually, essentially, we want to use this as a stepping stone towards getting uh, a completeness result for a universal, uh, a, yeah, a universal fragment of quantum computation. Um, there are some problems with doing this, which we face at the moment, and it would be interesting to talk to some people about. For example, uh, for more general uh, MBQC form diagrams, um, so when we have only Pauli measurements, uh, all of the angles are fixed to either zero pi by two, minus pi by two, or pi. Um, but for more general fragments, um, we don't have fixed angles. We will just have, uh, pla say, planar measurements. And that, uh, once we have this, it's a lot harder to decide what uh, two, di two MBQC form diagrams being equal means, because often we'll give these planar measurements some, uh, some angle and this angle can, is allowed to vary. Um, and so it's going to be significantly harder doing this for larger fragments of, uh, of the ZX calculus. Um, but this, the stabilizer stack, uh, fragment is a good start. And uh, with the regular com uh, completeness of the ZX calculus, that was started with the stabilizer fragment. And so um, we think this is a good step along the way to doing this for a universal fragment. Um, and so here is um, some of the papers we've uh, I've talked about throughout here. Um, importantly, we also um, found the uh, idea from the normal form from this uh, paper by Hu and Kessin. I haven't hadn't mentioned this earlier, um, but there was some errors in their proof of of the uh, of this thing being unique. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening to my talk. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it. And if there's any questions, let me know. Thank you, Tommy. No problems. You took me seriously when I said 40 <laughs> minutes. All right, are there questions? Uh, Alex, all right. And then John. Hi, so thanks for the really nice talk, especially for your very first uh, conference talk. Thank you. Um, when you reduce to the canonical form of, of this phase polynomial form, um, and, and what you have is a unitary uh, Clifford circuit, is it, is it always the case that the only red spiders are going to be on the outputs? Um, I, I believe you, I believe so, um, unless there may be, I mean, assuming I fix the order. 
correctly so that all the inputs come before the output. yeah so i've seen something in the holland um the holland literature uh, uh, which had something to do with um that we could always pick all of the input spiders to be green um and then um so yeah i believe we can do do that um and that because i we i had spent some time looking at doing this normal form with the unitaries instead of just doing it with states um but i as far as i can tell we are able to write everything in a form where all of the inputs are green hmm. and then some of the outputs are red uh, not necessarily all um because we can have more green spiders than red spiders Okay, so so in that case, if you look if you look at the graph, I guess you can look at the left side and you can read the phase polynomial off of wh what phases and CZs are, and then and then if you look at the right side, you can read that linear function that's sort of inside the mm -hmm. ket. Yeah, no, I, th I I believe that's that would be how it works. It's quite nice. Um, Miriam, did you have a yeah, comment? It's a bit more complicated than that, um, because uh, it's not guaranteed that all the spiders in the right will be red. Right, you can have unitaries which have support in which case all your spiders are green. Mm. Okay, maybe, maybe so, yes, we can... I'm sure that all the red spiders are on the right-hand side, but not necessarily, it's not necessarily going to be the case that all the spiders on the right are going to be red. I see, okay. <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah, so I think there's at least, at least half of the spiders are green, uh, but that, that, that is at least. At least. So, oh, yeah, I it see. could be all green. Yeah, so there's or... no red on the left, I guess, is the, is the point. Yeah. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Thanks for your question. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. All right. So, um, if I understand correctly, this uh, reverse of the Z deletion, if you have a Clifford diagram, this always preserves the Pauli flow? Um, it preserves Pauli flow for the, uh, the general case. Uh, we proved it for planar, with planar measurements as well. So, if you have just a general MBQC diagram, you can always insert a set of measurements connected to any set of vertices and this will always be de deterministically correct. Uh, as far as I can tell, uh, my, I, the proof's fairly simple. I can, it's in the paper, I think, um, or we can go through it together, but I, I, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, cool. Then cool. that's the end of my question. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> Thank you for the nice talk. Uh, could you maybe repeat uh, what the advantages of precisely choosing uh, this normal form are? Um, so the advantages of this precise normal form, yes. right? Um, so it's the phase polynomial form is particularly nice for being able to read off the, the state that corresponds to a given ZX diagram. So I think the RGSLC form um, is really good at being able to find the stabilizers of, of the state. Whereas with our, with our normal form here, we can very kind of clearly go, look at it and find out how, uh, a representation of the state, uh, kind of algebraic representation. Um, so that's kind of one of the uh, core important things of this. Um, and then uh, it's, we have this kind of uniqueness result where um, there's not been a, really been a unique normal form defined previously for stabilizer states. And so uh, we're able to find a way to make this unique. Um, and then also it works particularly nicely for our um, completeness rewriting procedure to be able to rewrite two things into a unique form. Um, yes, then... yes, the point with the uniqueness is clear, of course. Thank you. Um, do you think that your results have any bearing on classical simulations of partial p parts of MBQC? Um, I I'm not sure so much for this stabilizer fragment. Um, possibly, uh, it, it may do, and I'd definitely be interested to talk about this more uh, another time. Um, we're looking at doing this for uh, more general fragments of uh, uh, MBQC. Um, I suppose if we're looking at classical simulation of stabilizer diagrams, that's already done fine. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure um, too much on that. M uh, perhaps Miriam or we can talk later on. Yes, my question was about uh, um, whether you think that you can use this procedure to make uh, 
partial simulation of MBQC if the whole MBQC is not Clifford, but you have Clifford parts, of course. Okay. Yeah. Um, I will have to think about that more and get back to you, but that, that would, it does sound definitely very interesting. Um, and hopefully that's something we can do with this. Thank you. Cool. Sorry about that. So if I if I remembered correctly, you said that the phase polynomial form depends on the order you consider the qubits in. Uh, yeah, so it's um, somewhat arbitrary the order, but as long as we fix the order beforehand, um, then the unique no the for normal form we get is going to be unique still anyway. So is there an interesting relationship between the forms you get if you take different orders? Um, there may be. I, we haven't looked at it in, in particular, so that's definitely something that would be interesting to look at more. Um, we kind of, uh, we just wanted a, a normal form, a, sorry, a unique normal form. So it was, it's kind of uh, natural and um, quite convenient to just pick from top to bottom. Um, but if we had different orders on the qubits, um, there might be some nice, uh, nice, properties or comparisons between the different orders. Okay, thanks. No worries. Uh, there was new. Yeah. Yeah. There. No? Well, no. Yeah, uh, thanks for the great talk. Well, this is, it's weird hearing you in voice. Uh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, the, how do you uh, how do you decide on uh, or define uh, a canonical basis for the affine subspace and the output, right? Because then that's not it's it. I don't think it should be enough just to decide on the order of the qubits, right? Uh, because you can also replace any of those with a linear combination of the others. Um. So. Um. It's. I think it's the. It's the choice of free variables, right? So there's, um, if I'm understanding correctly, there's several ways to rewrite this thing here. So ex for example, we could choose uh, x3 is uh, equal to 1, sorry, we could write this as um, x1 equals 1 o plus x3. And then we could uh, reformulate this thing in terms of being, uh, we'd have a sum over x2 and x3 of some different coefficients and stuff. Um, and then, we'd get a, a different phase polynomial form diagram uh, that is, is obviously it's the same state so it's going to be equivalent um, I ha have this in the paper you can see this uh, but I haven't included it in the slides um, but it's about finding a kind of canonical way to choose the set of free variables uh, which I think is what gives us this uniqueness rather than the order the, the order is somewhat arbitrary uh, but we want to be able to find a unique way of choosing these three variables and um, this, the, this is the way we've, we've done so. So we only allow dependent variables to depend on three variables that are, are early, earlier in the order. Um, so this, this is why this one's in canonical form because x3 and x4 are, are the dependent variables and they depend on the things that have already been introduced earlier. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, great, thanks. I'll take a look at the paper too. Sure, cool. Thanks. Thank you. Sorry, another question about your normal form. No so um, if you know the Clifford state, uh, which you want to prepare and stabilize the state, um, do you have may maybe some um, property about uh, that the resources that you need to implement this state starting from all qubits in plus, for example, are minimal using the graph which you obtain by uh, translating the state into a normal form. Is there something like this? Um, no, not as far as I know. Uh, that's not something we've looked into yet. Um, but can you imagine that if you would check that you would find some relation of this kind, that you, can, uh, that you have a minimization of resources needed to prepare a particular state? No, not that I believe. Um, maybe Miriam will 
have. Yes, yeah, so I wouldn't expect that because, um, yes, yeah, as we said, this this canonical format depends on the order we've chosen, and so if we've chosen if we choose a different order, we get a different canonical form, and therefore. Yeah, like if you if you permute the qubits in your state, then you'll end up with a completely different resource requirement, even though the the underlying state is still basically the same, right? So yeah, I don't think there's any any result like that. I wouldn't expect that. But I would imagine that you, if uh, the only thing that you have to add to find that the minimal resources is permuting the qubits, it would be still much more efficient than. Um, thinking of all possible graphs uh, and measurements implementing this uh, this state, preparing the state now. So it might be still a stepping stone in this direction, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. I mean, I'm not sure we would use any measurements in preparing the state. So are, are you thinking of just the, the resource state or are you thinking of the entire pattern, like the entire computation? Right. Yeah. So, so um, in terms of the entire computation, it was actually proved by um, Duncan et al. that um, using the the sort of uh, flow preserving rewrite rules that they showed um, involving uh, local complementations and Z deletion, you can actually get rid of um, most of the Pauli measurements in your pattern. So that already like massively reduces the resource cost. Um, although, of course, yeah, I don't think there's any any sort of um, proof that that makes your resources minimal in some in some way. Yes, maybe my, uh, uh, the, the thing I'm um, thinking about is a bit not standard in the sense that I was thinking uh, about MBQC, which uses only Pauli measurements, but is not a computation, is rather a state preparation in the sense that you have output qubits, which you do not measure in this sense. I know that you classically can eliminate in principle, if you don't care about the flow preservation all Pauli measurements, but then of course you have no quantum state that you have prepared. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your questions. <laughs> All right, I think that's uh, fine. Quick one, though. Yeah, so maybe we can also talk afterwards. I was just <laughs> wondering, you talk about that deletion and that insertion. Did you look into what happens if I insert X, an X spider, or something like that? Um, so we can think about that as um, if we insert a Z measured qubit and then do some uh, local complementations about that, um, we can do something similar, I believe, uh, or not quite with with an X. So if we insert a Z measured qubit and then do a single local complementation about it, it then becomes Y measured. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one way we can think about it as Y measurements. Um, as with X's, uh, I haven't thought about it in particular. Um, I know we can kind of insert a pair of X vertices that are connected kind of as an inverse to the pivot rule. Um, so uh, I don't know what's happened there, but um, yeah, so there's this pivoting rule where we introduced by Dun uh, Ross Duncan where, and uh, et al, um, where we, um, if we have some two uh, X measured vertices which are connected, then we can, uh, use a pivot to delete them. Um, and so we can, I, I assume we can kind of do the inverse of that where we're, well, no, we certainly can do the inverse where we insert two qubits uh, like in, in the opposite way of that. And, and this still you, preserves the Pauli flow. Um, I believe so, yeah, because the, uh, the rules used to do the pivot and deletion are just some, uh, some local complementations and a Z deletion. And so if we kind of, do a Z in, if we, sorry, if we insert two Z measured qubits and then do a specific series of local complementations, uh, then that will be like inserting two, Z, two X measured vertices. Okay, thanks. No worries. All right, thank you, Tommy. Thank yes, you. Thanks, Amir. Thanks for your questions.